I've Oak Stain here, and today I'm doing something very exciting. So I'm doing an original tag called the Cozy Detective Tag. So this tag was created by Books of My Heart, and I will link to her channel below. Coming January 31st, we proudly present you with BookTube's Cozy Mystery Book Club. It's so exciting to talk about because there's not currently a Cozy Mystery Book Club on YouTube. So Cortagenist and I are proudly introducing more cozies to YouTube. She has a dog called Max, so I strongly encourage you go and subscribe to her channel just for the dog if not for the books. As usual there are a bunch of questions this one is cozy mystery themed I have a collection of books here that I'm gonna talk about so we're gonna run through each of the questions I'm gonna do my best to answer them and then at the end I'm gonna tag three people to take this tag and to continue it long may the cozy detective tag live oh yeah I was gonna go and get cozy let me get cozy oh much better now I just need a pipe <laughs> I look like a fine English gentleman. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm tucked in with my dressing gown. Okay, Google. What is a cozy detective novel? According to Wikipedia, cozy mysteries, also referred to as cozies, are a subgenre of crime fiction in which sex and violence are downplayed or treated humorously, and the crime and detection take place in a small, socially intimate community. So before we get into this, I should point out that not all of these are true detective. I've pulled out a couple that are more crime, but... I struggled actually. I, I read a lot of Cozy Detectives, but it's basically just every Agatha Christie book. Question one, location, location, location. Your favorite small town cozy. So for this, I've gone for a recent read and I've gone for Miss Marple's Final Cases. This is actually the last of the Miss Marple books, but I read this recently and gave it a five out of five. And there's a video review coming to my channel of it. It's quite soon as well. Now, obviously Miss Marple lives in uh, St. Mary's Mead. So that in itself is a delightfully quaint, small English town. And just purely based on the fact that Miss Marple is a badass and I really enjoyed this book. This is gonna be my answer. Question number two, for the love of food, your favorite food themed cozy. All right, now this is where it all starts to break down a little bit because I don't know if I've ever read a food themed cozy. However, I'm gonna go for another Agatha Christie. I'm going for a pocket full of rye. This is my old Fontana books collection. The reason I've gone for this is twofold. It starts with the guy getting poisoned by some poison in his tea, which is kind of food themed. But equally, there's also a point in this when somebody actually does bake some blackbirds into a pie. Question number three, man's slash woman's best friend, your favorite furry friend. This furry friend is not furry in the slightest. I'm going for Marlon the goldfish from Peter James's Roy Grace books. So this is definitely much more crime than Cozy Detective, but <laughs> I was struggling to think of a good answer to this this one. So, and, and Marlon pops straight into my head. So if you've not read these books, basically Roy Grace is a cop, as tends to happen in these series. And Marlon is his goldfish, but Marlon reaches like, he, get, he gets to be like eight, nine years old or something. He, he lives really long for a goldfish. And after you've read a bunch of these books, you start to really root for Marlon. You're like, yeah, I hope he makes it to the next one. How long could one goldfish live? Question number four, law enforcement, friend or foe, name your favorite ally slash enemy law enforcer. There are so many police characters in cozy detective fiction that it's hard to pick just one, but I went for the most iconic one and that is Lestrade from the Sherlock Holmes books. So I'm illustrating this with my copy of The Sign of Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but really any Sherlock Holmes book will do pretty much. Why do I like Lestrade? I think I like Lestrade because he resents Sherlock Holmes and that sets a pattern that really carries across to most cozy detectives or at least a great proportion of them where the, the police don't like the detectives. They wish they'd just leave them alone to get on with their jobs. And Lestrade is just a great character, I think. I think he's timeless. I think in Sherlock Holmes, you know, there are a lot of forgettable characters in terms of the minor characters and even, you know, the Baskervilles. I don't really remember the defining characters of any of the Baskervilles, but Lestrade really stands out. Holmes and Watson really stand out. Mycroft stands out. Question number five. Idle hands, favorite job or hobby to read about? 
I guess this is drinking. I don't really know, but I do always like flawed characters. So I do like detective characters like Holmes, you know, takes cocaine to take his mind off things. And uh, Dashiell Hammett wrote about the kind of classic hard-boiled detective in Sam Spade. Question number six. Elementary, my dear Watson. Favourite best friend slash Watson-esque character. So for this one, I've gone for the old sell promo route, because I have gone for Driven by Dane Cobain, which is me, by the way, in case you didn't know. It's my new detective novel coming out in January, near the end of January, and it's kind of like a quirky take on the classic detective. And the best friend slash Watson character in this is a character called Miley O'Hara, and she's kind of early 20s, heavily tattooed, quite short girl, really into computers and gaming and that kind of thing. And she basically joins Lightfold as his, you know, technological partner. So, so Lightfold, James Lightfold is your kind of classic, just older kind of detective and he solves things with his mind. He's got an eidetic memory so he can remember pretty much everything he sees, but he cannot do technology to save the life of him. So Miley comes along and helps him with all of his computers and that kind of stuff. And they make for a great partnership, but also Miley is so sassy and it makes me happy. <laughs> Miley says all the things that I wish I could say in real life, but don't because I don't want to offend people. <laughs> Question number seven, one big happy family. Who is your favorite cozy family? Honestly, the only cozy family I can think of is uh, Dr. Watson and his wife. Isn't she called Mary? I think she's called Mary. Okay, Google, what is Dr. Watson's wife called? Wikipedia, Mary Moore-Stan is the wife of Dr. Watson. Yeah, so I'm going for Dr. Watson and Mary from any Sherlock Holmes book. I've gone for a study in Scarlet because I already did the sign of the four and I, I guess these two are my two favourites. This one is very well loved because look at the rear cover, Watson and Mary. I honestly struggle to think of happy families. They don't tend to happen that often in detective fiction. I think the thing with families is they always try and kill each other, don't they? Question 8. Tis the season. What is your favourite holiday themed cosy read? I don't have one, I'm afraid. I don't necessarily read a lot of holiday themed books. I would like to potentially get into doing it more. Things like Christmas I never really used to be that into but I've got more into celebrating it recently but obviously I've kind of missed the uh, chance for that one. I do like the look of the Halloween party as well, which Hannah Tay reviewed on her channel. But if you can recommend any holiday themed reads that are kind of relevant to January, where there are no holidays really, then let me know. I'll check them out. Question number nine. Sometimes punny is best. Name your favourite punniest title. I don't think I have that many punny titles as well, but the, what sprung to mind for this one is one I just read, and this is Stephen Colgan, A Murder to Die For. And... Yeah, I mean, the punny title here, I guess, A Murder to Die For. There's a, a pint of ale as well in this. You can get a, a, an ale that was sourced for this village. And uh, that ale is called To Die For. So that's pretty cool as well. But just this entire book was very punny throughout. And I highly recommend it. Question number 10. Month to month, solving mysteries through the fall, winter, spring and summer. What is your favourite seasonal cosy series? And again, I don't know if I have a specifically seasonal cosy series. This is a crime novel series. It's actually billed as a thriller, but this is David Young's Stassi Child. And this is set in like, yeah, so 1974 East Berlin. So it's kind of at a time when the Berlin Wall is up and, you know, Europe is divided and there's the Cold War going on and that kind of thing. But because it's set in East Berlin, most of these books are kind of quite snow filled so they're all very wintry and it does have that kind of Christmassy vibe except with a conspiracy thriller slash police procedural set in 1970s Eastern Europe. I mean if I haven't sold you on that then I don't think there's much more I can say on this. <laughs> Question number 11 special skills does your favorite amateur detective have a unique skill? And I don't even necessarily have a favourite amateur detective, but I think by their very nature, they tend to not have unique skills. They are amateur detectives. I mean, for example, James Lightfold in, in the book that I wrote, his main skill, if you would want to call it that, is his memory. But that's not like a superpower or anything like that. It just is something that he happened to be born with and then developed through time, you know. So... Even Sherlock Holmes doesn't have a superpower, it's just the way that he thinks is his ability. So I guess not, I guess I guess the answer to this question is no. Question number 12, reading time. How do you get cozy to read a cozy? 
So I pretty much curl up on my sofa back here wearing this dressing gown. I'll put my feet up over here. I have to be careful though because I don't want to knock the tripod over. I'll potentially grab this blanket off the back and wrap it around myself. And maybe I'll have a hot water bottle and a hot drink as well. Question number 13, recommendations. What is your favorite cozy mystery? For me, this is probably Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile. It's probably my, one of my favorite Agatha Christie's, if not the favorite. It's definitely the one I've read the most, and this book means quite a lot to my mum as well, so I think it's kind of a family thing. I've also played some games based on this book and seen myriad adaptations and all this kind of stuff, so probably Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. And if you've recently read Murder on the Orient Express and want a new Agatha Christie book to sink your teeth into, Death on the Nile is definitely worth reading, but if not, and then there were none as well, I would go for. So there we have it. Those are my answers to the questions for the cozy mystery book tag. I'm now going to tag three people to take this. But again, as it's a new tag as well, I strongly suggest if you like cozy mysteries, just feel free to take this tag and let me know as well if you do take it and I'll check it out. In the meantime, I'm going to tag Todd the Librarian, Mindy's Book Journey and Hannah Tay. So, let's see if you can figure out a way to answer these. By the way, I have no idea if, apart from Hannah Tay, I don't know if Todd and Mindy actually read Cozy Detectors, but I'm going to tag them both anyway because they both deserve shout outs and Todd somehow finds a way to do any tag. Like, he will make these questions relevant to sci-fi or something. Todd, that is your challenge. I expect to see the video within 48 working hours. And anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Please do leave a comment to let me know what your favourite cosy detective novel is. And in the meantime, I will see you soon for more bookish videos. <laughs> thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye.